and our energy right now. My body has been responding pretty well all morning, almost going into kind of agitation or uh, anxiety. You recognize that you are not the thinker, neither the thoughts, that you are the background of awareness that never moves. That's the mind, it's not you. The mind is the storyteller. You're silently aware of yourself as silence. And the mind is telling itself and others stories. It is dreaming, that's I, all. I'm aware of the silence and I'm aware of the mind. You are the silence that illuminates the mind as well. Just like the sun that illuminates the, the moon. And the mind doesn't have its own light. The silence illuminates itself and everything else. <clears throat>
So is the, is the mind I want to see the mind is free well. Wow. The mind of every other part. The mind is already free because the mind is just a bundle of thoughts and thoughts just freely appear and disappear in the field of awareness which is you. As long as you don't mistake yourself to be a thought then everything is all right. The moment the mind forget you, it thinks it is a physical form, body. And now it start to get scared, and it it's it sense it is separate from you and others. The mind is looking for the freedom and the freedom is awareness, is you. So the mind is looking for you yet the moment it forgot you it thinks it is a physical body and it is a real object and now it is looking for the freedom in the objects of the world. Yet instead of experiencing freedom the mind experience misery restlessness, suffering. And the moment it sees that when it gets attached to an empty thought, a dream, and that there's nothing in the dream, its face is turned back home to you. So the mind has to be seen as a dream, unreal. A dream is not a real thing. The mind has to be seen as what, sorry? As a dream. It's a dream. It is dreaming in the dreaming state at night and then it wakes up to the waking state and it is dreaming the waking state itself. No difference. Okay. It projects the whole dream, which we call world, and then instantaneously it reduces itself to a physical form, and then it perceives the world. So now, it, once it perceives the world from a separate entity, I am a physical body, then it dreams within the dream. Yet, who you are is unrelated to that. Who you are is pure, conscious, ever free, changeless awareness in the background. It never relates to thoughts. It has no relationship. I, I, I experienced it yesterday as trying to t attach itself to past or present or future in order to identify itself, gain an identity. The mind? And when, when it couldn't find uh, attachment, it got very scared. Yeah. Very scared, that's, that's just a... It freaked out because it, it couldn't find an attachment. Something to identify itself. That was an experience, that's what I, my medication. When it rests in the beingness of who you are, in that awareness, it rests, there is no freaking out. And everyone, every night, when the mind subsides into dreamless state, deep sleep state, the mind is not scared about that. The same when it rests in the beingness of who you are, it is not scared. 
just a habit to it's just a clown illusion tries to grab the mind's attention again so it goes out that's the habit all the habits have to play themselves out to be seen and dissolve Even fear is just an illusion, yeah? It imagines something that is not even happening. Fear is always of the future, yet there is no future. The mind imagines a future based on the past and now it scares itself. And because the mind is imagination, it can only get scared or react to other images in the mind. So once it is seen, that's it. It's a clear scene. Don't try to. Just look at the mind as an illusion, the thoughts as a dream, and then let the mind rest. And what remains is you. The mind doesn't know what is nothing. It imagines something and it calls it nothing. Silence is beyond imagination. So how can the mind would look to something that is beyond itself. It's but a, even nothing is something. It, is, it can only perceive a thought, a conceptual image. So when there is no thought, we cannot say it's nothing or something. It's you. Yeah, it's you. Don't look for the with the mind to silence. Silence is a work of itself by itself. It doesn't need a thought to be aware of itself. It would be absurd for the, the moon to look for the light in itself. It has no light. And the sun doesn't need the moon to recognize that it illuminates itself and others. It just illuminates everything without even being aware of them. Thought is sound. Awareness is silence. Sound does not know silence. Silence knows itself. Sound can only recognize noise. So body is noise, mind is sound, who you are is silence. tries to look for the silence. It would be like a fish swimming in the ocean looking for the ocean and meets another fish and says, hey, have you heard about the ocean? And say, yes, yes, it's very far away. Let's swim together to reach it. Swimming in the ocean. Let them I, can, I can, I can 
hear how my mind is right now. It is so preoccupied with the searching right now. What is it searching? Well, it's trying to, you know, it doesn't understand how to turn to see the, the awareness or the silence. It's like it, it is too loud. It's not that. Uh, there's a knowing of it, but not a connection. The mind can never be separated from silence. So, wanting to know it is a trap for the mind to keep itself active and busy looking. The fish, instead of just resting in the ocean, now it starts to swim, searching for it. So, it gets exhausted and frustrated inside the ocean looking for the ocean itself and it even screams and cries I am thirsty I need some water and the water goes through the mouth through the body of the fish awareness is within every thought yet it doesn't relate to thoughts and thought cannot appear without awareness cannot appear without awareness so thought is dependent upon awareness awareness is not relating to thoughts whatsoever the screen does not relate to the movie yet when there is no screen there is no movie so the movie is dependent upon the screen yet the screen has no relationship no awareness of the movie itself Let the mind discriminate itself. See, let the mind see that it's not you. Let the mind see that the thoughts are not real. Negating what you're not. Who you are remains. You cannot negate it with the mind because it is beyond the mind itself. Because when the mind is looking for silence, it's more active. And another thing that can happen, any experience, it comes out to claim, ah, I found it. And now it possesses it. This is me. This is my silence. And now it wants to keep it and gets attached to it and made, makes the silence an object. It objectifies it. Then these are just my, the games of the mind. Just watch it and discriminate it. I'm not this. I'm not these thoughts. You can never become you nor you can never lose you because you are omnipresent means you never appear and disappear only thoughts appear and disappear within you That's why who you are is fearless, is free of judgment, free of, I, of preferences, free of reactivity, free of thought. So don't, from the mind's perspective, try to be without thoughts, because that would be a thought into itself. 
I don't want to have thought. I have to have a, a silent mind. These ideas are just... But even if I'm feeling sensation in the body, that it's the mind that is interpreting the sensation in the body. That's so right. I'm still not without mind. You, you don't have a mind. The mind appears within you. Just replace the order. You don't have a mind. Because you are silently aware. And who wants to be without a mind? Isn't it the mind itself? Isn't it that I? It's because it reacts to unwanted thoughts. This is the lower mind reacts to thoughts it doesn't like. And the thought it likes, it wants more of this. Because the thoughts are a sensation or they generate a sensation. So if the sensation is pleasant, the mind likes it. It wants more of it. If it is unpleasant, it doesn't like it. It wants to get rid of it. It hates it. So out of habit, it resists it. And that's how it sustains it. That's how what? It sustains it. The thing. But giving it things it doesn't like, it just attaches itself to that too. It identifies with what it doesn't like as well. Yeah, because if, if it doesn't like something, which means a particular thought that generates a sensation, then it resists, means it believes it is real. This is why I see every thought as a dream. It liberates the mind. Because no matter what happens in the dream, when you wake from the dream, you realize it was a dream instantaneously. No matter how bad the dream was, you're freed. You're not even occupied what happened in the dream. If you truly realize it was a dream and it's not real, that nothing that you dreamt really happened. I was given this inside this exercise a long time ago to record my whatever happened during the day I a dream at night. As if I had dreamt the whole day. So that's basically what you're saying. Yeah. The whole day is the dream. Yeah, the waking state is just a longer dream. So treat it that way because even if you treat it as real it doesn't make it real it still remains a dream because something that is not real cannot create reality so an illusion creates only more illusions that's all reality doesn't create anything because it never moves it is changeless awareness And I'm using different words, thoughts, to point to the same thing, which is beyond any words and any thoughts. It's just a pointer. So the pointer is not the real thing. The real thing can be only experienced, cannot be understood mentally. And because it's everyone's nature, everyone can experience it. They just have an idea that they are 
there are something else, a separate entity, a separate self. And it's just a thought, nothing more. happy to hear reality is awareness. Yeah. It's the only reality. Why does it make me so emotional to uh, know that? Maybe the mind is happy to see the direction back to rest in reality because who knows for how many eons it is looking except it is looking out in the wrong direction and it is very frustrated and lost thinking it's there yet it's not so it suffers so much looking for reality in the illusion. From the time I've been a child, three years old, two years old. At least. How do I understand myself as you? And 
comes back to the same thing. Comes back to it. I was gonna ask, how do I know you as me, and everything else as? I'm your projection in your mind. Your mind. Projection. projection means when you when you refer to me as a physical form then I am your projection if you refer to who I truly am when you know you there's only you which is me so there's no you and me. <clears throat> that alone exists otherwise all the rest is just a projection of the mind the whole world, the whole universe is a projection of the mind. You're projecting the whole thing. Yet it's not a you or a me that is an individual that identifies with a physical form. It's a universal mind. It's one mind, one eye. And it appears when it reduces itself to a separate entity, individual, that it splits to many I because when I ask what is when you ask who is a uh, Joe the answer will be I who is a uh, Rick the answer will be I who is Mark the answer will be I so it's the same I and then it split or identifies with this physical body and on that physical body, that I superimposed a name. Mark, Joe, Rick, alone, doesn't matter. And then it appears like there are many minds. Rick has a mind, Joe has a mind, alone has a mind. Yet it's I universally project the whole universe. And then it reduces itself to an apparent separate entity superimpose the name on that entity on the physical form and now so many minds so many parts yet everyone can recognize that when the I thought appears the whole universe begins space time begins and then that I thinks it is a body and then instantaneously it believes it is inside the world. So I am a physical body inside the world, so that's an individual. Yet the I projected the world before and then it reduced itself to, a fit, to the thought of I am a physical form and then it's already there is a world, so I am a physical form in the world. It happens almost instantaneously. It's when we, what we call out is to recognize that I project it, you project it. You project in, you project out, it's all one projection. The, the divisions, it's because of the senses. In and out is a division inside the mind itself. There is no really in or out. And because the thought divides, splits, separate, so it does that, the illusion of separation and divisions as well. From the point of view of awareness which is you, all there is is awareness, no divisions, no separations, nothing. These are all ideas.
there is no all, there is no one, there is only awareness aware of itself by itself. Otherwise the mind is looking to experience the oneness with everyone and then start to make all ideas of you are, I'm one with you, it's there's then duality, I and you, that's the same, no difference. It's dreaming all of it. Look at it as a dream. It liberates the mind. Then it can turn its face home to you. It's not even you going through the process of awakening. You are already awake. The mind is waking up from its dream. It created itself. turning itself the when the when the eye turns around to look at itself it recognizes that it is reality that's a phase a step just for the mind not for reality yes so it's like a signpost so if somebody say okay the mind went out on a journey dreaming a whole dream and now in the dream suddenly it gets a map knowledge with clear directions and a signpost that's just a signpost for the mind returning back to who you truly are We are dreaming this whole thing, yet you are not the dreamer, nor the dream. You are prior to that. You are beyond that. This is the true nature of who one truly is. It doesn't mean the dream stops when it appears. It just points that you don't treat the dream like it is you. You don't mistake you. you don't mistake in you to be the dreamer, not the dream.
not the doer, the one that is done too. Yeah. In the, in the dream we think we are here, who you are never moves, so nothing happens for you, you're always free, nothing ever happened, and then in the dream we think we're somewhere, and we say here, <laughs> yet it's in within awareness. It's like, why am I here without this thought, where am I? Give the mind a task that awareness, which is you, would be the primary focus of the mind. fix the attention as much as possible on you or discern itself waking itself out of the dream I 
understanding that the focus has been on the mind, the mind's projection. The, It almost sounds like another process or another step. Of understanding itself. Does the mind understand itself? There's nothing to understand, it's not real. What is there to understand a dream when you realize it was a dream, and a dream is not a real thing. There's nothing to understand. If the mind is looking for a job, give it a job to undo itself. So there's the story that the elephant, for the nose of that elephant, they give it a chain so it holds the chain so now it's occupied not to put its nose in all kind of places. So if the mind is looking for a job, just let it inquire into your true nature. Examine itself. Let it examine if the thoughts are real. Or it's, is it a dream? And then it disappears by itself. It's undo itself. That's the magic, because it is an illusion. If it is looking for a job. Yet the one who is doing the job is not even you. It's the mind. It's not, sorry? It, it's not even you. You never move. The mind is looking for a job. So instead of out of habit, get attached to thoughts and get lost in a dream, let it undo itself. Check if the thought is real. Is it a dream or real? The mind cannot get attached to a thought when it recognizes it is not real. It's impossible. As long as it gets attached to thought or thoughts, it's because it, for some reason, still thinks and believes it to be real. So it's looking for the reality in the thought, in that idea. So it's confused for a moment. And that's only the habit, it's not even you. The moment you are aware of me that's a proof that you are not me right the moment you're aware of the cloth you're aware you're not the cloth the moment you're aware of the body you that's a proof that you are not the physical body the moment you're aware of thoughts that's a proof you're not the thought so discriminate this Because if you were the thoughts, you wouldn't be able to be aware of them. And even the one who is aware of the thoughts is not you. Yet that's the clue for the mind to return back. Yeah? Awareness is not aware of thoughts. It's only aware of itself. Yet that's the clue for the mind, the direction to return back home to you. withdrawing in
the moment it moves out from I it moves to my the moment it moves to my thought this is part of me means parts of part of I and that's how it creates the illusion by my me to have a bigger I yet that's an illusion the I has no parts so it collects like this my thoughts my ideas my beliefs my habits my judgments my preferences my body and then from then on my objects my children whatever it it moves out my my and all of them are part of me so if I lose my something that is mine I lose something that is of me yet I collected it it never was me it's actually even separate from me yet my creates the illusion identical as I so my body is me and it's part of I so I am the body and it it imagines all of it dreaming it just like in a dream the mind desire it's because of ignorance it forgot you it forgot the stillness which is you so the moment it looks out it forgets the stillness and now it wants the stillness and it creates looking for the stillness in the movement that it created and it never finds it so it's restless and it's keep moving out looking for it only when it hears the words that direct back the mind to stillness then instead of cre creating and looking for the stillness it is undoing its creation and resting in stillness and the whole movement appeared within or from stillness itself stillness is the source of all movement Stillness is you. Stillness is me. But why does it move? It does Why not. does it want to seek itself? This, if it knows itself. Yes, it doesn't need to move. It never moves. It knows itself. And then the thought thinks it is a physical body. So yeah. there's a, a difference between a knowing and ex direct experience and thinking stillness doesn't need a thought to know itself when there is an experience of who you are then the thought would appear within that experience and say hey this is me except that's just a thought it's not the experience itself why 
I guess it's just what it is. Um, I had I had awakened. And the body didn't need to eat. The body didn't even remember it. There was no attachment. There was just a stillness. And then it just automatically fell back into thought. That's actually common and normal. Except don't connect stillness to the body. That there was no desire to heat. The, bo the body doesn't care about food anyhow. It's only the mind. Okay? I realize that, yeah. So it doesn't really matter whether the body eats or not. Because the body is just a modification of food. So without food it dies and it turns to be food throughout and after. Anyhow. So it doesn't really matter whether he eats or not. Because people try all these practices of uh, living on prana. or It doesn't really matter because then it's again all body identification. The body, leave, leave it alone. And whatever is happening with the body is happening. And if the mind is a good manager of the body then it does the best it can to manage it and any anyway the body goes through exactly what it needs to go through so it doesn't really matter just just recognize that the mind is the manager is not the owner yeah and a manager if it if the manager is clear it's not emotional about it and is not it doesn't really react to it you just take care of whatever is needed and leave it alone. The owner is very emotional about it. Because it thinks and believes that it is his. This is mine. Then this is a <laughs> misidentification there. So we leave the body alone. And anyway the body is a conceptual image in the mind. Because when there is no thought, there is no body. In deep sleep, when the thought subsides into you, no physical form, no external world, nothing. Yet what happens, because the mind subsides within you and there is still their ignorance, when it comes out, it comes out with the same habits, the same ignorance, everything. There was no real transformation in the mind, means no dissolvement there. Yet when the mind rests within you, when you experience you in the waking state, when it comes out, it's no longer the same. All that, can ha that happens, what I heard you share, is that the habits come back, they spring force back, and that's, it's a must. All the habits come into the surface to free themselves. Yet the mind is now attached to a particular experience, and that's a trap. I understand that, and uh, that is, that's what's happening. It's, it's, um, I'm not getting hooked in to whatever it is happening now while well, so much and and even when you think you you are pulled in it's not you it's the mind pulled into the dream because it is locked into a dream separate between you and the mind and the dream mm -hmm. this is discrimination yes the things that stood out for me are that I am the reality and then I'm the dreamer and the dream. Or my mind is the dreamer and the dream. Yeah, I it's, am it's not that's right.
all the beauty radiates through you. My, re my reality radiates through me. It radiates through the dream, what to do? Because <laughs> it just, it just light illuminates, yes? Shine through. Thank you. You're most welcome.
moment the necklace moment. I feel like the reality wants to embrace the reality. It wants to love the reality. All it knows is reality, so it embraces it without embracing anything. Part of it was? Without embracing anything. 